Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this second video in our series on the interview with NASA on their X-57 electric aircraft, we zoom in on the propellers, why they are so specific and how they relate to the propellers on other electric aircraft, including vertical takeoff and landing concepts. Enjoy! Is there any link between the propellers we see being put on vertical takeoff and landing planes and the, the pro propellers that you're designing, or is it two it's completely different worlds? Actually, X-57 has two very distinct types of propellers, and they're still also different than the ones you're going to see for vertical takeoff and landing. So the high lift propellers are fixed pitch, but fold very conformally. I've got, actually, this is a wind tunnel test of one here in the image behind me. Um, but they, they, they have a very funny shape. Um, I don't have a blade with me. Um, we've actually designed them to, to create a very uniform flow field, no matter where you are on the blade radially. That's because we want to be able to uh, change uh, the airflow uniformly over the wing. That does not make a very efficient propeller at producing thrust. So if, if you're looking at trying to produce thrust efficiently, you have this kind of uh, this uh, um, almost kind of Weibel shaped curve uh, where um, where you get get a lot more velocity induced velocity um, out towards uh, um, out towards the tips. Um, so that's. That, that's that's what our wingtip propellers look like. They are designed to efficiently produce thrust. And then um, uh, aircraft, particularly those that have a lot of, like a helicopter, um, that's a rotor that's also a rotary wing because you're because you're, you're lifting on it. So it has other features. It'll have uh, uh, flapping hinges and cyclic controls and other sorts of things that you may not have. Uh, these EV tools that you're seeing Depending, it kind of depends, um, but they're all going to have to deal with some of these trade-offs. How does the flow interact with the wing? Are you using it for efficient thrust production, or are you using it to efficiently generate lift and edgewise flight as you might with a rotor? I can imagine that you don't want too much swirl in the flow because then you get a very high and a very low angle of attack left and right of the propeller. So you want to generate thrust, uniform thrust, without swirl unless i have counter rotating props it's it's not possible yeah. um so actually when the wing is operating with these high lift propellers it is incredibly inefficient that change in lift distribution in between yeah. the props um leads to some fairly high uh induced drag as well as just the increased um, um parasite drag from from scrubbing uh from the increased velocity um still that uniform axial velocity helps to I want to use the term minimize, but helps to more predictably have that variation of angle of attack along that wing. So even as the as your angle of attack is increasing, you have a more predictable, more steady variation of that of yeah. both the axial and the swirl induced angle of attack. So it gives you a more steady response. It actually doesn't really increase the maximum lift much. We like that what we found is, is that that uniform axial velocity increase, just helps us um, uh, helps us with the uh, uh, basically throughout the speed range that we're using these propellers. So that was it for our second video in the interview series with NASA on the X-57 electric aircraft. I hope you liked it and stay tuned for the next one where we will look at the power and cooling demands of the electrical system. Thanks a lot for watching, drop an interesting comment below and see you soon. Bye bye.